Um, this is five milligrams of apamolin with uh, two mLs of backwater. So, uh, and now it's it's finally clear. So, crystal clear, apamolin, ready to go. So, this video may help those that have already reconstituted peptides before, but um, somewhat gearing this towards those who have never reconstituted peptides and they are a little bit uh, worried about doing it because they don't want to damage or destroy the very, very expensive peptides that they purchase. So um, you can stick around. I'm pretty sure some people do this differently than what I'm about to uh, do. But at the same time, I, I'm doing this based on myself personally, uh, damaging peptides um, and how I figured out uh, surefire way to not damage the peptide that you are about to reconstitute. So um, you need three things. You need uh, a needle. And the needle I use is a 29 gauge needle. And the reason why I use a 29 gauge needle is because it's big enough to draw your back water and it's small enough to where when you introduce this needle into your peptide, it's a slow steady drip into your peptide. And the reason why you want a slow, steady drip into your peptide is because you don't want to damage your peptide due to the turbulence that some larger needles may cause when you introduce that needle into your peptide. This needle is perfect, takes maybe 10 seconds to uh, reconstitute the peptide, and it's the right size. I've had smaller needles to where I had a hassle drawing it back water and spending a, a considerable amount of time trying to get that back water into the peptide. And I've had bigger needles to where when I inserted that needle into the peptide, it damaged the peptide because there was so much turbulence um, and the water was hitting the peptide um, too strong. Um, and that happens because when you insert your needle into the peptide with back water, uh, the peptide valve has back pressure and it will automatically pull in that back water. So the larger the needle, the more turbulence. Um, the 29 gauge is perfect. Um, I've never, ever, ever damaged a peptide using this uh, needle. 29 gauge, half of an inch. Perfect needle. Syringe. So um, the syringe you want, you want to make sure that that syringe can hold the capacity of the, the, the back water you need for that specific peptide. So if that peptide needs uh, 1 ml of back water, make sure um, the syringe is at least 1 ml in capacity. If it needs 2 mLs, make sure the syringe is at least two mLs. Um, and the reason why I say that is because you don't want to, you don't want to need two mLs of back water for your peptide and you have a one mL syringe. You draw one mL of back water, insert that one mL into the peptide and you do the same thing twice. Doing that, you are introducing uncertainty. So uh, you may damage the peptide, you may have a sterility issue, um, it, it, it doesn't matter. You, you only want to do that once. Um, can you do it and get away with it? Yeah, of course you can. But if you're spending $200, $300 for a peptide, why not just waste a 10 cent needle and a 10 cent, uh, a 10 cent syringe and a 10 cent needle doing it to where you absolutely know you aren't going to damage it. Uh, that peptide. So I'm telling you all of these things based on what I've done in the past and how I've my I've myself personally damaged peptides through reconstituting. So make sure you have um, a syringe that fits the capacity of the back water that you need and a 29 gauge. As far as how much back water you need for your peptide, uh, this can sometimes be a tricky one. Uh, because the higher the concentration, the more of the bite when you pin yourself. So I always say the more back water in your peptide, the better. Uh, some peptides are forgiving 
when the concentration is high, like Reto two tied. You can uh you can reconstitute Reto with one ml back water, and you're not gonna feel anything, no bite, no nothing. If you reconstitute one ml of tessamorlin, um, a five milligrams of tessamorlin, um, you're gonna feel that when you pin it because of the concentration. Same concentration as uh, Retta. Um, Tesla Merlin is just a little bit more acidic than, Re than Retta. So in some cases, you have to play with it a little bit to figure out um, how much backwater you need. Um, but at the same time, the bite isn't going to kill you. But if you're pinning yourself multiple times per day, it gets old pinning yourself. And each time you pin yourself, uh, you're getting a sting. So, um, you can figure that out. I mean, my opinion, do at least two MLs um, with all your peptides. And, and if you feel like uh, you can do less next time, do less next time. But like I said, the higher the concentration of your backwater peptide mixture, the more likely there will be a bite. The lower the concentration, the smoother that pinning will be. So it's up to you on how you figure that out. So those are the two things you need, the right syringe and the right needle and also a, a alcohol swab. I'm very big on um, cleanliness and sterility um, and I think you should be as well. So that's what I got here. So I'm gonna just reconstitute five milligrams of tessamorlin is it tessamorlin? No, it's ipromorlin. I'm gonna reconstitute five milligrams of ipromorlin um, just to give you guys an idea of um, how it looks using the 29 gauge needle and the three ml syringe. So let me get started. Uh, ipromorlin, I always use two mls of backwater with the um, five milligrams of ibromorlin, and I never have an issue. Um, I also use two milligrams, I mean, um, two milliliters of backwater with the 10 milligrams of ibromorlin, and I still don't have any issues. So um, two mLs is the sweet spot. No issues, smooth, smooth pen, no sting, no nothing. Good to go. Um, and like I said, I know plenty of people, they have different ways of doing this. Um, they may not be doing it the exact way that I am doing it. Um, I am doing this based on um, doing hundreds and hundreds of, uh, reconstituting hundreds and hundreds of peptides and and, and, and destroying a vial, a, 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 a 10 milligram vial or rata. So I do this and, and I do it the same way because I don't want to deal with the headache of destroying, uh, um, well not the headache, but you know, it's expensive to um, these uh, peptides. So give me a second. It's the back water. As you can see, it takes some time with this 29 gauge, but I'd rather spend an extra 30 or so seconds drawing the backwater. And, 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 and being that I that you are using an adapter, um, you may not you may want to get a little bit more than just two MLs if that's what you need, because some of this backwater will be uh, stuck in the syringe itself. So I normally do um, 2.1 mLs just to make sure um, I have the backwater that I need because of the amount of backwater that would be actually stuck in the syringe once I reconstitute it. So once you do that, make sure you get all of the air. 
all of the air is out. And, and when you insert your needle into the back water, there's back pressure in this uh, peptide, and the back pressure in this peptide will draw in the, 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 the back water. Just hold your hand on the plunger. Um, even, even still, if you aren't holding your hand on the plunger, the 29 gauge is small enough to ensure that you aren't uh, introducing turbulence into the peptide and destroying it, but still hold your hand on the plunger to make sure that it's not going in um, too fast. So, see, as you can see, my hand is barely on the plunger. That's it. And I have the needle pointing downward inside the valve, not directly uh, perpendicular to it, more at an angle. And that's it. So once you get done with that, I just do this, not saying you have to. And that's it. Uh, and it's pretty much done. I don't know if you can see that or not. There we go. It's pretty much, pretty much done. So, got a, got something still sitting there, but that should dissolve within the next 30, 60 seconds. But um, that's basically it. So, uh, like I said, um, some people may do it differently. Some people may not go through the steps I went through in order to reconstitute their peptides. But I do this based on experience. I do this based on the peptides I've actually destroyed. Um, this method has worked with me flawlessly. I haven't destroyed peptides. Um, so I hope this helps. And like I said, some of these videos may be somewhat redundant. Um, this is five milligrams of apromorlin with uh, two mLs of backwater. So, uh, and now it's, it's finally clear. So crystal clear, apromorlin, ready to go. Less than, uh, with 60 seconds. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope this helped you.